So there's one question I didn't really know how to answer back in high school. And that is, how do you return a string in C? Not really, how do you actually do it so that it always works? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So first, let's create a simple function, right? That's going to be our test function. We're going to call it something like, oh, I don't know. Let's say uh, get string. And as a return type, let's set it as a char pointer, because that's how most strings in C are declared. Okay, and back here, I want this char pointer to be stored in main. So you say char pointer, let's say, I don't know, s equals get string. So we call that function. And then we print it on the screen so that we know that we did something right. Okay. And there we go. Now the question is, what do we actually type in here so that we can return a simple string? Well, the simplest answer is simply actually return a literal string like so. Just return and in quotes, you just say whatever you want here. And there you go, you return the string. And if you try to run this, you'll notice that we get test on the screen, which is amazing. That's, that's what we wrote here. Now that's fine. That's fine if you want a string that's never going to change. The problem becomes visible when you try to modify this string. So let's say we want to change this first T to a P so that we get past, right? And we do it like so, right? We just kind of get the first element, which is S of zero and set it to P simple enough, right? This is a string, so it should be possible. If I try to run this, well, this blows up as you can see. So why is that? Let's, let's find out. So first you have to realize that these literals, these um, strings inside the quotes are stored in a separate place in memory, not in the stack, not in the heap, just a separate place. And that place can never be changed, right? It's a read only sort of memory. It kind of makes sense because, well, if you think about it, where does this test? Where do these four or actually five characters are stored? Like are in the stack of this function, then it would actually get freed after we called this function, right? So it's not actually like that. And it's not dynamically allocated because we cannot free that place in memory. If we try to actually free this memory, you will notice that we also get an error. And that's not because of the assignment. It's simply because we're trying to free a place in memory that shouldn't be freed really. Uh, as a rule of thumb, you should usually consider these as const pointers, right? Instead of just saying char pointer, say const char pointer if you try to uh, get a literal string back. Because then, if you try to modify this, you will get a compiler error. And that's, that's absolutely amazing because you see, that means that our program wouldn't crash simply because it ran some sort of function somewhere in the project. It simply won't compile, won't give us an exe file or executable. In fact, even if you try to assign a const char to a char pointer, it uh, would give us a warning that we are simply discarding the const from, well, this result. So that's really nice. Okay, so we've taken care of these types of uh, strings, right? So these literals are in a separate place and we cannot modify them. They're usually a const char pointer. So what do we do? What, what if we want a, well, literal that is also modifiable? Well, for that, you'd want to store your own characters inside memory somewhere. So first, let's break this down into declaration, initialization, and then returning the actual value. So let's say char pointer, I don't know, str equals test, and then just return this str. Okay, this will work the same and it will also crash. Simply because this is still a const char pointer. But what if we change 
this. So instead, instead of it being a um, char pointer, it's a char array. So if we do something like char star, instead of char star, we say char str and open and closed brackets. What's going to happen? If we try to run this, you notice that the program actually runs and doesn't crash and we get the expected result. Now, well, that has to do with the way we initialize a string. You can take a look at the video up top for more information about how you can initialize a string. But basically, what this does is instead of taking the reference to that place in memory that it initialized, it's actually allocating space, right? So we've allocated um, five bytes of memory inside this array on the stack of this function. So this function, um, once it's called, has these characters. So if we return, what's going to happen to these characters actually? Well, the problem with this is that once you've finished executing this function, the str array is gone simply because it's on the stack. So we need to do something about that. So what's the final solution? Well, it's actually kind of simple and it has to do with pointers. See, we should stop actually returning a pointer and we should try taking a pointer as a parameter. So we should change this to void, remove the return statement because we're not going to be returning anything and take the place we want to store as a parameter so that we know that, oh, okay, so you have to put it right there, right? So once you get out of the function, no matter what happens, the, the one that called the function has to deal with the memory and actually owns the memory, not the function itself. So here's how it goes. Simply declare here a char pointer, so let's say str. And then, well, we cannot, we can no longer do something like this or something like this. This doesn't work, simply doesn't work. And what you have to do is call one of the functions in string.h. I have here included string.h and you can say str copy into str. We're going to copy the string test. And now, well, if you try to compile this, it won't compile because we have to change the way we call this function. So we need to actually pass in the string. So we're going to just have, let's say like that. And let's pass in S here. Now S can't be a pointer because, well, it can be a pointer, but then you have to allocate that. So instead we're going to have it be a simple plain old array of characters, something like, let's say an array of size 50, right? and simply declaring it. We don't need to actually initialize it. And now when we call get string, this S from here will decay to a pointer basically. And if we go in here, it's going to copy this test string, which remember it's still allocated in this place, this special place in memory, but now it's being copied over to our array. So it's being copied over character by character <clears throat> into str, which is our array. And then if we want to modify it, well, so be it. We can modify it without problems because this array is ours. We've declared it here. It's in our functions stack, not in the get string function, right? So we can simply use it however we want. We can even dynamically allocate it if we want, but that's, that's a thing for another time. So if we try to run this, we get the expected result passed and it works properly this time. We are no longer deallocating this S before using it. So I hope you found this useful and it clarified some issues you probably have had in the past regarding strings because I know I had. And thanks for watching and see you guys next time.